Hi, Will. How are you? I'm very well. Is the name of your outlet a reference to the Goonies? It is, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, we're big, we're big on nostalgia. So obviously it was a great, it was a joy to speak to you today. Um, I, I really enjoyed Rent a Power. It had a kind of Black Mirror feel to it, I thought. It was really, I just, it was quite, I don't know, the whole atmosphere of it just has really stuck with me since I saw it. Um, I was wondering what it was that initially attracted you to, to getting involved in, in this project and to this character. From the moment I started the script, I just couldn't stop turning the pages. Mm. I just wanted to know what was, what was going to happen. I loved how unclear the reality of Andy is. I loved the idea that Andy might exist only in David's head. I thought that was really, really cool. Um, and I loved the story. And it's the kind of movie I enjoy watching. It's, it, this is a movie with a simple premise um, with characters you can absolutely believe and, and relate to, even if they're terrible. Um, and, uh, and, and I, I just, I could see it. I could see it in my head while I was reading it. There, there just wasn't, there wasn't any heavy lifting to do to, to like, to, to get from, uh, an idea to, to an actual work of art. And I loved it. Um, I had, uh, a couple of gentle notes and a couple of, of, of suggestions and I had a wonderful creative call with John and uh, um, and I made my suggestions and he took them and uh, we felt like it made the script even better and uh, uh, I, I had I just had the best time bringing this character to life. Yeah. So tell me about getting the kind of voice and the tonality of the role right because he's kind of friendly the whole point is he's very friendly but he's got a kind of creepiness to him and he could be quite um sort of yeah manipulative and i was just wondering about how you kind of access the uh the, the feel of the character and the vocals of the character too so i thought about what really motivated andy what like what are, what is what like what are his his primary motivations and what's his north star right and andy is very much like David, he's extremely lonely. He's extremely insecure. He does not have a lot of self-confidence and uh, he's terrified of being alone. So the most important thing in his life is to keep someone close to him and he will do anything. To, to keep that person around. So he becomes a predator. He becomes an abuser. He becomes um, a stalker. And, and he, he becomes um, a deeply manipulative person. And I've been around people who exude those qualities in my life. And I just sort of went through my, my, my mental library of, of awful people who are no longer in my life, and I pulled qualities from them out and used them to inform who Andy was. was it, it must have been quite a strange shoot for you, because I guess all in one room, same outfit. I mean, how, did, how, how was it, this kind of quite unique shooting experience, to be it was one great. kind of... Yeah. No, it was great. It was really easy. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed Like, not having to change clothes is terrific. Uh, not having to, lockdown. <laughs> not having to to match uh, continuity because you only work on one day is terrific. Um, it was just me and the camera, and I really liked that. I thought that it was appropriate because the actor who plays Andy in the reality of the picture is just a guy who went into a studio just like I went into a studio. Yeah. So I just leaned into the reality of that and uh, um, uh, embraced uh, the isolation. And I used it to, uh, to, to inform and, and to sort of stimulate Andy's, desire, Andy's desires to not be alone. Did you, I mean, did you even meet Brian during the shoot? Yeah, how did that, yeah, because yeah. was it all done independently? I did, yeah. So when we shot all of my stuff, Brian came to the set that day uh, so he could see me, so that he could see Andy, um, and uh, so that we could just know each other a little bit. Um, so that when he was reacting to Andy, uh, uh, his reactions would be a little bit more based on a human experience rather than the recorded experience. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was going to ask if he had your tape to kind of go off when he was watching it, or was he just looking at a blank telly? I don't, I don't know. Um, uh, and I haven't had an opportunity to ask him. Um, uh, either way, his performance is so impressive and, uh, and so beautiful and, and so incredibly memorable. Um, uh, whether he was working from tape of me or his uh, memory of me. Well, the way I, I am at the moment, it's like I've got into a fight with him, to be honest, <laughs> uh -huh. with his character. Um, I was wondering too about the, uh, the fi I mean, obviously the film is quite dark and it explores the kind of dark si sort of side to the human psyche, but in some ways there was a nostalgia attached to the whole renting, the blockbuster days, you know, going to the, the v to get, pick up a VHS and go home. I'm just wondering about your, your, your own memories doing that. Do, do you remember sort of when you used to sort of go on maybe a Friday night and pick up a VHS? Yeah. yeah, of course. Like my entire high school experience was let's go to a video store. Let's go to the horror section. <laughs> let's find something that looks like it probably has a topless woman in it <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and might be a little scary. Like that, that's, if you are in Gen X, that's what you did on the weekends. We yeah. did that or we went to the mall. And sometimes we did both. Yeah. Did, you, did you do the thing that I used to do where you just get the same tape out every week for like six months in a row and just watch the same film over and over again? There were a couple of, of ridiculous movies, B movies that we liked that we would rent over and over again. Um, but in, I remember finally, like I bought Monty Python and the Holy Grail because I realized that I was just spending so much renting it that it made more sense to just rent <laughs> it on video. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, one of the films I used to rent over and over again was Stand By Me. So oh. I just wondering, because I, I interviewed Jerry O'Connell a couple of weeks ago, and he was chatting about it. I'm just wondering about how fondly you look back on that experience. And, and, and when you watch the, the movie back, if you ever do watch it, if it's quite strange seeing yourself as, as a child kind of on screen and what that, what that experience is like for you. I don't see myself. I see someone's child. Mm -hmm. um, uh, <clears throat> I, I know who that child is. Um, and I remember a lot about being that kid. So it's an emotional experience for me to watch the movie. Um, Gordy and I have a lot in common. The reason that, the reason you love Stand By Me is because the performances are so believable. That's why everyone likes this movie. The characters are relatable because Rob cast four young men who were uh, those boys. Um, I was so sad. I really wanted to be a writer and nobody in my family was listening to me. My parents did not see me. My father did not give a shit about me um, and was deeply cruel to me. And uh, uh, that, that whole experience of that Gordy has where he's just like, my dad doesn't love me, I'm no good. That's how I felt. Um, uh, that's how I felt until I was in, well into my 40s. And um, uh, when I watch it now, what I see is this little, this little boy, this little 12 year old boy who is trying so hard to please his parents. He's got a mother who is so obsessed with him becoming famous that she never listens to him. He has a father who, if he pays attention to him at all, it's to be a bully. Mm -hmm. And um, here is this kid who is so hurt and, and is suffering a lot. And Rob Reiner loved that kid and nurtured that kid and pulled a performance that is timeless out of that kid. I feel a weird separation from who I was when I did that because I wasn't me. I was the, I was like a, I was a sort of a hand puppet for my mom um, and, uh, and a punching bag for my dad. 
because I, I, I think it must be such an, an emotive experience then for you when you watch it back. But uh, having interviewed Jerry quite recently, he was such, on such so much charisma, on such good form. I was wondering if you guys kind of stay in touch because what you've been through making that, I mean, you've all, you all share this very unique bond, I guess, because you, you kind of went through something so big together. It's such a kind of, um, it's, a, it's such a, an, an age where we're, we're sort of taking so much in. So do, do you have this kind of quite special relationship with your co-stars from that? Yeah, Jerry and I um, are our friends, and we talk re pretty regularly. Um, we're not, you know, we're not family. I'm family with my with my castmates from Star Trek. Um, yeah. uh, they they stepped up and stepped in where where my parents just failed, and uh, and I love them, and I I talk to them uh, the way that I I would talk to a family if I had one. And uh, Jerry and I are extremely good friends. Um, I'm hosting the Ready Room for CBS Interactive right now, and Jerry's on the Lower Decks Star Trek series. So I've gotten to talk to him about that. And uh, uh, we talk about how much we love, we each loves the character the other played on Star Trek. Um, and uh, I'm really happy for him. Um, he has an incredible career. He's such a talented actor. Uh, and he's just an extremely kind human being. I'm really glad that this, this thing that is bigger than us has kept us together for so many years. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Will. It's been a real pleasure speaking to you, and best of luck with the release and stuff. Thank you very much. Cheers. Well, cheers. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Yeah.